So next I wanna show you kind of how you work with keys, you know, multiple keys at the same time, and just demonstrate a technique that I've used for years that I've found to be really robust and pretty procedural. You know, you can copy and paste it across a lot of different shots that were shot in the same scene and get very similar results with just the minimal amount of tuning. So in this case, we have our plate and I'll let this play through real quick. We've got a little bit of motion, our screen's moving, which again, isn't uncommon on production. You know, the green screens are flapping in the wind or people are bumping into them. So we're shuffling our alpha in solid. We're then doing a reduced noise. In this case, I'm using neat video to do my noise reduction. And as you can see, I've now split this. So I have a hue correction where I'm despilling, and then I have a degrained plate. And I'm using those each because they do a specific thing and I want those to do that on their own. You know, I don't necessarily want to denoise my plate that I'm going to cut out of. I, maybe I want to maintain image fidelity and the denoisers making things a little too muddy. So I can despill my main plate with my grain still intact, but I can degrain my plate and then use that to actually generate my alphas. And then I can bring those back together. So here I'm denoising. And you can see, we'll flip over to blue, which I think is the worst. Red's pretty bad. You can see we're reducing a considerable amount of noise here. And this was an 8-bit camera, so 8-bit in S-Log3 is going to be very noisy and have a lot of compression artifacts. So now that I've reduced my noise, I'm going to go into what I call my core mat, because what I like to do is I use a generic keyer, pull a pretty tight clean core mat, and then I use IBK to actually generate my edges. That way I'm using the best of both worlds. So here I've pulled my key light key, and you can see it's pretty tight. We're shri I'm shrinking it a little bit, and the idea is you want your core mat to be just a hair smaller than the widest part of any semi-transparency. So if you have high motion blur, you might actually have a very small core mat, or you might even have to augment it with a little bit of roto to help support it. Or if you have a very solid object, you know, say you're keying out a guy and he has no hair on his head, you don't need a very eroded core mat. You can leave that core mat almost right out to the edge and it's gonna work pretty well for you. So the next step there is I'm taking that core mat and I'm actually masking it out of our despilled image. And you can see the spill in here that I've suppressed. Now, as a second process, I'm using IBK to generate an edge. So I'm using the IBK color node to create my clean plate. And then I'm using the IBK gizmo to pull a key. And in this case, I'm pulling in auto levels and I'm using background and chroma as well. You can see I'm really getting nice detail on the whiskers and the hair. And you can see where it's actually starting to pull the background through certain areas of the cat. You know, like it's coming through his paw here. That's probably not what we want, but we do like this hair detail. So we're going to just leave it where it's at and then pipe that into the rest of our script. Sometimes to get the exact transparency you want, you might still have a little bit of spill left over. So I'll do a secondary spill suppression on the output of my IVK. And it's kind of hard to see, but there is a very slight amount of green left in after I got the key where I wanted it. So now I'm just sucking that green out. So now this gets into kind of where the magic happens. And this is just a gizmo I built. And it's pretty simple. It's a dilate on the inside and outside of the mask that also allows us to soften it. It just looks like this. Nothing crazy, but it just gives me a little faster control to do what I'm trying to do here. So if we look at the output of that, and I'll actually reset it. So it starts out like this, and it basically allows us to expand the mat, both from the inside and the outside, and then apply some softness. And the idea is we're, we're basically creating a skin that's going to sit on the very outside edge of our key. So we want to have enough outside thickness to encompass whatever whiskers or hair or anything else that our IBK is giving us. And we want to have enough inside thickness so that it overlaps with our key light key or core key. And then we can actually soften the whole thing if we want. So that gives us a mat. We're then masking that times the output of our IBK. So now you can see we're just getting this edge and the reason we do this is it eliminates a lot of this other noise and garbage that we get from the IBK. 
we then are just doing a simple merge over. And this is where I talk about being able to work pre-multiplied. We're just creating a pre-multiplied over piece. We can just over this on top of our other core key. So now you can see we've really filled out that key and we're getting a lot more fidelity in the hair around the edges. And you can see some of our background coming through too, the way IBK is multiplying that in. So now, and the other, the other really important thing to note here is we're actually using a background input on our IBK gizmo that's pulling in our background, which is this. And this is really where the magic of IBK lives. It allows us to use that background input, which lets us do a more dynamic spill suppression, which is really where this thing shines. So now if we look at the whole thing put together, you can see we have that semi-transparency through the whiskers and through some of the motion blur. Let's go to a frame where his legs moving a little quicker. So you can see we're getting really smooth fall off in our motion blur. And if we flip back to our original, you can see we've lost a little bit of detail, but we've really maintained a lot of fidelity through some of the, those wispy finer areas. And we could honestly go in and probably manipulate our IBK a little bit more to try and grab a little bit of that. But we're, we're tuned pretty well here, I think, for, for what we want this to be. And sometimes this is an issue of, you know, making sure that your, your edge control has actually expanded enough to give you what you need. So you can see here we're actually, we're not getting everything that the IBK is giving us because we're a little too controlled, we're a little too choked down. So we can grow this up a little bigger. And you can see we get a little bit more whiskers back and we got a little bit more of the bottom of the foot. And we'll just let this play. And again, the idea isn't to have, isn't to have the cleanest key. The idea is to have a key that is very organic and integrates well with the background. So now that we're playing back, you can see that we're getting some detail in the whiskers. You know, that's, I would, I'm pretty happy with that. You know, once you add grain back on top of the areas that have been degrained, you're really going to get a lot of that fidelity back that's in the original plate. You know, with very minimal loss of edges, you're not having to, you know, really crush everything down. The other really nice thing, you know, it looks a little strange here, but if we were keying this cat onto something, he would, we would want his contact shadows and we're actually pulling contact shadows in from that IBK process. And you can see we're even getting some of the like wispy whiskers off the back of his legs. So that's what I call the IBK wrap method. And it's, the idea really is creating a strong core key and then using a secondary key to generate your edges, you know, and really give you that nice, super organic edge detail through your semi-transparencies and, and through your motion blur. All right, and that really sums up keying.